All right. All right. All right. So I don't normally do this, but like, what the heck? What the heck is this? Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. 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 But like, this is basically saying nine out of 10 doctors recommend not subscribing to Grip. Like, we only got like Dr. Pepper on our side, and then we got the other nine over there. And another thing. What the heck is this? Like, I'm not sure if I should be concerned or not. Half of you guys would rather have these three things than part three. Like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Just, it just all smells kind of fishy in here to me. Anyway, in all seriousness, if you haven't subscribed and you like my comp. Anyway, in all seriousness. <laughs> anyway, in all seriousness, if you haven't subscribed and like my content, please make sure to do so. I'm just trying to make it out here, man. So, if you have watched the past two parts, congratulations. That's all. No, but actually, I wanted to clarify some things that fans actually taught me about. Number one. Number two. However, now that that is done, welcome to the sequel. Sequel. So if you actually followed my instructions previously, then that does mean that you most likely lost a couple brain cells. You should have a decent set of diamond tools, and if not, then at least a pickaxe. Now, one of the main things I really wanted to bring up was armor and tool enchants, alright? Axes, pickaxe, and shovels all share the same enchants. Swords, bows, Mary and Jane, these are all weapons, but have different names for their enchants. However, they mean the same thing. Now on to armor. All armor shares the same enchants except for your boots and helmets. They have some spicier options. Now, for boots, I'd recommend getting Depth Strider over Frostwalker for a number of reasons. Number one... You can also enchant fishing rods, elytra, tridents, crossbows, and books. So now that we have covered enchanting, uh, this brings me up to my next tip. Get an XP farm. Now you will get some XP from your cow farm. However, there is a high gap in experience earned between passive mobs, creepy creatures of the dark, and Call of Duty double XP weekend. Now at this point, for the absolute fastest game, I'd recommend making a blaze farm. However, what I'd really recommend, if you can find one, is a skeleton farm. Now skeletons don't give much XP as opposed to blaze, withers, guardians, or endermen farms. However, they do give you something important. You get bones. Now something I really like to do with my skeleton farms when they are far away is make nether tunnels and implement an enchantment room into the actual skeleton spawner. Now, if you do not know what I mean by nether tunnel, here you go. Every 10 blocks in the nether on the X, Z coordinate plane is equal to eight blocks in the overworld. So here's the math. 10 blocks in the nether equals 80 blocks in the overworld. 100 blocks equals 800 blocks. Catch my drift? You move way faster. You can make a thing called nether tunnels. Some people use ice and bows to travel at warp speeds. However, making nether tunnels in general is always a good first step. Now to calculate how to find the coordinates, go to the skeleton spawner lobby area and put the exact coordinates you want your portal to be at. Now, go ahead and divide the X and Z coordinate by eight. Once you have done that, go back to your main portal and find that coordinate in the nether. Now, you could always just make a portal in the skeleton farm in the overworld. However, it could pose a future problem of nether portals linking to the wrong nether portal, if that makes sense, in the future. Now, one more thing, unless you have a nether portal near this one, the Y coordinate doesn't matter that much. However, if you want to be safe, use the same Y layer as the one in the overworld because it remains the same throughout. Now, go ahead and build your nether portal in the nether that matches the overworld coordinates when divided by eight. For example, if 80, 55, 160 are your overworld coordinates, make another portal in 10, 55, 20. Understood? Now, when enchanting your armor, I highly recommend cycling. Not only to stay in shape, but to get through all the trash options until you get protection for option, so that you don't get stuck with any of the knockoff brands. Like seriously, who wants any of the other enchants? However, once you actually get all of your tools and such, you'll probably notice that some have more enchants than the other. No worries there, because that is where the uh, microtransactions actually come in. I mean, uh, villager trading comes in. Yeah, of course, villager trading. Now, yes, you could use an AFK fish farm. However, I just feel like that is not that fun. What is fun, however, is putting some villagers in a boat, taking them halfway across the world, putting them in a chamber, giving them carrots, forcing them to make babies. Woo! 
So similar to mending, you want to try and get the max level books for each enchant. However, if you cannot, you can simply combine two books of the same level and the same type on an anvil and it will level it up one level. Same thing for armor and tools if you combine two likewise pieces of armor or if you combine a armor piece with the corresponding level of an enchantment on a book that will level it up as long as it's not already at the maximum level now villagers do unlock more trades as they level up so uh basically it's not being broke if you happen to get one with a good trade make sure to level them up and get them to max level to get all of their options now if they do happen to be useless just put them with the rest of the useless ones okay now the way i recommend getting the currency to actually buy all these is actually with a mic Micro crop farm. <laughs> See what I did there? Microtransaction, micro crop farm. <laughs> so this farm is really simple to make. Now, what I would recommend is obviously getting a farming villager. Now, if you get a farming villager, most of them offer some sort of crop trade for emeralds, whether it be carrots, melons, wheat, weed. These guys take all of it. And since you basically have an endless supply, it works out great. Uh, Wait, no, that's just me. However, once you have all that you need, you can start trading, combining, maxing out, flexing. You can basically start making some god armor. So one thing, however, I would recommend waiting until you have mending on your armor before you actually use it because armor does break really quickly and sometimes it can break without you even noticing. And I would also recommend maxing out your boots and helmet first because those are honestly the most useful unless you're someone that dies a lot go ahead and do your chest plate first and then do your leggings and then do your other stuff all right so at this point you should have some god tools some god armor some god weapons so if not then you should obviously just keep grinding your villagers your skeleton farm and your crop farm keep leveling up keep getting more and more crops to trade for more cash more cash more currency more currency more clout you know what's going on right so you you keep trading with your villagers keep getting higher level books keep upgrading your armor your tools until you get them up to the maximum level now i will be going ahead and linking a tutorial to each the skeleton farm the micro crop farm obviously and then if you just want a simple low villager trading hall, I will link that down below as well. Now, you want to make sure that you get all this stuff maxed out because it will help with our next journey of going into the nether and getting netherite tools. But unfortunately, we are going to be saving that for the next episode. So if you would like to see that, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you have not. Go ahead and turn on notifications with all of them on so that you are posted as soon as I upload number four. Number four confirmed. Number four confirmed. So yes. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you have not, and obviously, with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.